Well, welcome back from that uh, break. Uh, as we uh, take a look at what's happening in the crypto world and, of course, uh, the metaverse, uh, I have joining me right now uh, Rume Dominic, certified blockchain architect and metaverse um, expert. Uh, many thanks for joining me this morning, uh, Rume. Thank you very much for having me. I'm grateful, my very good friend. All right. Uh, I, when I did my intro, there's a whole lot happening with Binance and, of course, uh, the issue with Binance and Nigeria. Just, uh, just walk us uh, uh, right through all that happened and how there was um, seemingly a scam called uh, Binance Nigeria and what's happening uh, generally with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, truly, when um, you are faced with certain challenges, you have a couple of bad actors trying to capitalize on these challenges, especially when you're a global figure, when you're a global company, and we are one of the biggest and strongest players in the market. So recently, you know, the SEC, which is Security Exchange Commission, have had a bit of a um, lawsuit against Binance, Coinbase, and Kraken, which are some of the biggest cryptocurrencies that are available in the world at the moment. And we see that the reason why they had that particular um, lawsuit against Binance is because they said that Binance was being uh, um, they were involved in trading things like security. And for those of you that don't understand what security is, just like maybe a stock now, if you buy some stocks in the market, let's say Apple stock, Microsoft stock, Amazon stock, you expect these stocks to go up in value and then you're able to make profit from it. When you engage with cryptocurrency financial instrument, people are actually expected to buy into this different financial instrument and make some level of profit from it. So when this happens, the Security Exchange Commission consider that type of cryptocurrency immediately as a security. So they've had an exception with Bitcoin and Ethereum, but what of the other 25,000 different cryptocurrencies available in the world in which some of them are traded both on Binance? So that made the Security Exchange Commission to actually slam a lawsuit on them. Then during that period that it happened, we now saw a couple of bad actors, especially in Nigeria. Yet, um, I don't know if that particular um, personality originated from Africa, uh, but the person was just trying to capitalize on the situation. And we even saw a tweet from the Binance CEO saying that truly we should not believe every single thing that we see on the news because the person was trying to paint a picture that Binance is actually an illegal company or this thing here in Nigeria, we should see that Nigeria, which is one of the biggest cryptocurrency uh, markets in the African space, will try to now withdraw some of their funds, maybe withdraw some of their citizens from trying to engage with Binance, and a couple of people will be scared because there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt at that particular point, which will see Binance lose revenue, which will see that. In fact, I was looking at some statistics, and Binance has actually had over a hundred and something million dollars withdraw in the last few weeks and you can see that that is actually a lot for a business to lose because of just this type of news that's out so truly it is actually a, an illegal entity that claimed that particular handle or that particular account social media account to be able to spread that false news about them and thank god that at the moment they are coming out of that situation they've been able to turn the case around and come to a position of strength and have a bit of leverage against the security exchange commission and right now, also debunk that news, especially with the illegal practice of Binance here in Nigeria. And at the moment, they are looking a bit strong and pretty good to go in the market. So, invariably, uh, things are now okay. Uh, Nigerians should still be confident in the fact that uh, they don't have anything to worry about because. Uh, how does this really play out on the image of the country, uh, especially when Nigeria is one of the most active players when it comes to cryptocurrency in um, the world, globally, that is? Actually, it is actually a positive um, development when you see the CEO of a company, of a global company like that, that has come to address it, especially with a specific region and niche area like Nigeria being the biggest player in the African continent. It means that we should actually be happy and also try to understand that we actually have a very strong market position, especially in the cryptocurrency industry. And then um, I can't say, just like your first question, if maybe every single thing there has normalized to normal. But you know, in cryptocurrency, wherever you choose to trade your cryptocurrencies, your fund is a function of the user's, is the user's choice, actually. But one thing we advise in crypto is that 
You can always have it to be my keys, my phones. Mm. And the true reason for crypto is decentralization. Binance is actually a centralized exchange. And there's a possibility that any day Binance gets locked, maybe you might not have access to your phones. Or maybe you just go down and see this is not the property of the FBI. And maybe you might not be able to withdraw your phone. So it is better for you to maybe start looking at alternative methods to start trading with decentralized exchanges, like maybe GMX, like maybe... Um, uh, Apex Exchange, that's the subsidiary of Bybit, and a couple of other decentralized exchanges like oh. Super EX that possibly would give you access to your keys and your phones at any time without seeing that maybe a security exchange commission comes to shut them down and then you lose access totally to your phones, which might send you to Rex City and increase somebody's heart blood fracture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, let's leave and buy then for one minute and just try to come closer now to the country. Uh, with all that is happening with our monetary policy, specifically the floating Naira or Naira float, and of course uh, the exchange rate and saga. You know, in your world, the crypto or metaverse, uh, how has this really impacted in uh, crypto trading and cryptocurrency operations so far? Is it a positive effect or is it a negative one? Well, <laughs> it's actually... A mixed feeling at the moment. Um, however, it is important for us to define terms so that the audience actually understand what the currency float is. And truly, it is just a bit of fluctuation in the value of the currency per time. And you see that in Nigeria, truly, the currency float of the Nigerian era, it would allow that its value would be determined by market forces. True. And truly, for every um, economy that has actually allowed their value to be determined by market it's forces, which is the forces of demand and supply. Wow. They've actually seen a fair pricing rate, especially with the FX in that particular industry. It is good because when you look at the currency like Bitcoin too, when we relate it to the cryptocurrency industry, we see that it is actually a currency that is determined by the factors of demand and supply, given the fact that Bitcoin has only 21 million Bitcoin available. And the demand for that 21 million Bitcoin is actually what sets the price of Bitcoin to go up, which is currently at about 30,000 dollars today. Um, if the currency, if Nigeria experiences a good economical time, it means that the value of the Naira will go up and any cryptocurrency that has actually bought against the Naira will see that it is actually strengthening and appreciating over time. But the inverse could also be the case if the value of the Naira actually starts going down. But one major thing that is making it to affect cryptocurrency exchange actually is the fact that you know, there's something called liquidity in the market. Liquidity is the ability for you to be able to exchange your digital asset or your cryptocurrencies for cash at any point in time. And when you have maybe the economy going down and maybe the value of Naira is reducing, then you might see that a fair market pricing, just like this one, might see that there will be a reduction for Naira or user base in these different cryptocurrency exchanges that have pay to pay or people that actually supply like e Naira to this different platform to be able to trade this type of cryptocurrency so um it is a bit of a mixed feeling but i think overall it is a good thing for the nigeria um, economy, economy to be able to have that type of fair pricing system and crash maybe the parallel market rates we see that we're actually focused and trying to build the other sectors of the economy oh well said okay so let me get your quick reactions concerning uh the latest uh that's some um, taxation on uh, capital gains on um, you know digital assets. Uh, do you welcome that development? <laughs> Truly, that is actually one of the best news that I've read all week. You know, um, what what does the government really need? The government needs the every industry to contribute to the taxation policy of that. So the taxation of that particular country, you can say less like the aviation industry now. There's a particular level of tax they pay to the government. The manufacturing industry, they pay it certain, or the agricultural industry to have the level that maybe it is, whatever is coming in from the tech industry as well. Yeah. Now, we are seeing that um, the cryptocurrency is a new niche industry that has come and it's a trillion dollar industry. I saw in McKinsey report that artificial intelligence, which is tied to blockchain too, at the moment, will generate about $4.4 .4 trillion for revenue, which is actually much more than the economy of Spain. Mexico and a couple of other countries combined like that. And um, it is actually, at the moment, something that I welcome. I welcome it because um, it's, overall, it's going to be a very good thing for our economy. All right. 
So as we uh, round off now with you, uh, Rome, uh, let's talk about, you mentioned it in passing, that's um, artificial intelligence. Uh, let's talk about how the role it plays in um, the entire metaverse, uh, uh, blockchain technology and all of that. Uh, what are we going to see different uh, this time around? <laughs> okay, just like we made the we made mention of the taxation of the cryptocurrency and blockchain mm -hmm. industry. You know that artificial intelligence is also a new sector that is or a new technological niche coming. Now, government really wants taxation, right? And that's the money that they will be able to use to develop infrastructure. Mm -hmm. With a new economy like the artificial intelligence industry coming in too, you can see that if they tax this particular industry, let's say 10% of 4.4 trillion revenue coming in in a month that is taxed by the government, we see that they are making at least revenue in billions of dollars. And when they add, then they put that revenue back into developing hospitals, schools, and all of those things, they will see that the rate at which infrastructure development and better living standard for the people is actually achieved faster because there is much more money to deploy. And that's actually one thing that that 10% taxation of the cryptocurrency industry we do. Right. You also see that people would be they are more invest there will be actually be much more investors to mm -hmm. come into the cryptocurrency space and artificial intelligence space because they are now clear right. that okay go into this space and then they will just tax they will tax us 10 percent when they tax us 10 percent we'll give it to the government and we'll right. be able to do our business free and fair. All right, thank you so much, uh, Rume Dominic. That's as much as we can take uh, on today's uh, episode. Uh, Rume Dominic is a certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. Many thanks for all of your useful uh, insights as always on the show. We do appreciate them. All right, no problem, my very good friend. Thank you very much for having me. All right, my pleasure. Just before we go, I'll leave you with this feature. It's on um, the digital economy and, of course, how we can deepen financial inclusion. I'm Justin. Akadonio, again, Business Insight will return same time tomorrow at half past nine. Have yourself a wonderful day ahead. Bye for now. In Nigeria, investors are taking positions or stakes in the country's growing tech ecosystem, internet penetration, and reaching the large unbanked population. However, fintechs have been saddled with challenges of financial inclusion, loans as well as digital security. Disruptions within Nigeria's tech space will be stirred as digital banking makes its way into the fintech community through ghost mode banking. These features help to actually help to um, customers to encrypt their transactions. So in this sense, we are actually building features that will ensure security. And above all, we are also using, we are also um, providing a strong um, security architecture that will um, protect customers' data overall. And that's one of the reasons why we are actually going to talk about um, data privacy protection and uh, security. So in the sense of it, if you actually even, if, if you transfer to somebody who has a funny character or criminal character, or even erroneously, or you misplaced your um, your gadget, and they see that transaction, they you are protected if you had actually used that ghost mode feature. Full digitization processes mean that customers will not only be able to conduct transactions real time, but will also get much needed support online. Yes, the CBN has been clamoring for financial inclusion. And um, I, I just say that it is actually a very challenging project because I'm, 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 I'm experienced and I've uh, been involved. Um, the reason is that the cost of actually um, bringing these people on board is um, pretty high. And um, cost of doing, cost of ensuring that the, their transaction is done is pretty high.